let's talk about dimensionality reduction. So some of the most interesting applications of machine learning, say to images, videos, music, and so on, involve data that lives in a very high dimensional space. So just to give you a small example of that, let's say we consider one image that is 1,000 pixels wide and 800 pixels tall. So this is a medium-sized image, and it lives then in an 800,000-dimensional space. Okay, And usually, we do not have 800,000 examples, so the number of examples n in our data set is usually significantly lower than the ambient dimension um, of our data, so that's d. So usually what will happen then is classifiers will end up overfitting the data. So we're inferring things that are not really there. And ideally, we'd like to find a lower dimensional representation of the data set that still preserves the important relationship between examples in the data set and their features. So this is basically a kind of unsupervised learning problem. There are many ways to do this. Um, a simple one connected to things we already know is called principal component analysis, or PCA. And this is one of the most simple and popular methods that you can employ. So this is something we can understand using what we already know from linear algebra, and we're going to try to do that now. OK, so let's recall some basic facts from linear algebra, specifically about the um, covariance matrix. So these are important properties of the covariance matrix from the uh, perspective of linear algebra. So the covariance matrix is just this outer product of x vector minus its mean vector. And you take the average. It has real and non-negative eigenvalues. That's not true for any matrix, but it's true for this one. And using this fact, what we can do is all sort the eigenvalues. So these eigenvalues, along with their eigenvectors, get sorted into descending order. So lambda 1 is bigger than lambda 2 all the way down to lambda d, which might be 0 or greater than 0. So these eigenvectors are orthonormal to each other. So specifically, if I let v1 through vd be the eigenvectors sorted in the same order as the eigenvalues, then vi transpose vj is either 1 or 0. It's 1 when they're the same eigenvector, 0 otherwise. So they're all at um, 90 degree angles to each other. So if we collect those into a matrix, the eigenvectors, and collect the eigenvalues into a diagonal matrix, let's call it lambda, the eigenvector matrix V, then what we have is an eigen decomposition of our covariance matrix, which we write as V lambda V transpose, with the property that V times its own transpose is identity because it's orthogonal. And that's the property of an orthogonal matrix. Basically, it's transpose is its inverse. And this holds for sample covariance matrices too. So the covariance matrices we estimate from data have all of these same properties. So say I give you a random vector x, and we know its mean vector mu of x, okay? And we also know its covariance matrix sigma of x, okay? So that we're going to decompose as v lambda v transpose. Then we can carry out the following coordinate transformation, and this is basically PCA. So what we're going to do is first center the distribution at the origin by subtracting the mean. Okay, so we shift it down to the origin. So the x centered is just x minus its mean. And then we're going to rotate it by multiplying by this orthogonal matrix of eigenvectors. Okay, so this ends up being a coordinate system rotation. So we're going to write z as v transpose times the centered x, which is just x minus its mean. It ends up that the entries of z are uncorrelated with each other. So the covariance of zi with zj is 0 whenever i is not equal to j. So there's no linear relationship between the transformed features. And the variances of these transformed features are now equal to the eigenvalues themselves. So the variances are just the lambda i. And the reason we have this is just the covariance matrix using the covariance of a linear transform is just v transpose times sigma times v. And these v transpose and v's cancel out to be identity. We're just left with lambda, which is diagonal. That gives us all we want. So to reduce the dimension to k, which is what we wanted to do in the first place, we're just going to throw out all but the top k entries of z. And this is nice because we know that the 
entries of z are sorted by their variances because the eigenvalues were sorted by their um, values, right? So their uh, magnitudes. Okay, so principal component analysis basically follows the same steps, except we need a first step, okay? Which is that we don't know the mean and covariance um, in advance, we need to estimate the mean vector and covariance matrix from data. Okay, and this is simple. It's something we can do in MATLAB or in any other numerical software. I'm just gonna run through it just so we have all the details here. Usually we're gonna use the training data to do this. So we're gonna collect all of our examples, d-dimensional examples, into a single data matrix, which is n times d. So that's just gonna be the stacking of all these examples transposed. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just calculate the sample mean vector, which we can do by summing up all those vectors and dividing by n, or multiplying this data matrix transpose times the all ones vector. Okay, so this is the all ones vector of length n. This will accomplish the same thing. Okay, so once we have that sample mean vector, we're going to center the data by subtracting it. And we can do that on the whole data matrix by again using the all ones vector to copy that mean uh, vector. And we can do the same thing. We can compute the sample covariance matrix by taking one over n minus one, summing up the outer product of x minus its sample mean vector. And we can do this directly on the centered um, data. So that's kind of a simpler way to write this. We can then think about this as happening on the data matrix. And we can also think about it happening directly on the centered data matrix. Okay, so these are all just different ways of writing the covariance matrix. We can compute its eigen decomposition and it has the same properties that we saw before, real and non-negative eigenvalues, orthonormal eigenvector matrix. Okay, so visually what we're gonna see from this whole process is a data set X. Okay, so here's a data set in 2D and I wanna reduce it to 1D because that's as low, that's all I can really do if I start at two. So I'm gonna compute the mean vector, it turns out to be here. And I'm also gonna compute the sample covariance matrix, and I'm gonna visualize that using a contour plot. So here it is. And then I'm gonna compute the eigen decomposition for this sample covariance matrix. So I'm gonna get some eigen vectors and eigenvalues. And I'm only gonna keep the first k eigenvectors, okay? So there are a lot of these in this case, I'm only gonna keep one in this visualization. So I'm gonna center the data. First, I'm going to move it to the origin, and then I'm gonna project onto VK, right? So I'm gonna multiply by VK to do this projection. What that means is I look at this new coordinate system set up in this case by V1 and V2, and I only keep my first coordinate because I'm trying to reduce down to K, in this case, K equals one dimension. So I look at my transformed or rotated coordinate system, and then that's where I'm getting those values, okay? And so now I have this new transformed V1, and that's what I keep. I keep Z, these green dots, as a k-dimensional representation of our original d-dimensional data set, okay? And in this case, d is two and k is one. Okay, so this is super important for us if we wanna visualize high dimensional data sets. It gives us a way of pushing these high dimensional data sets down to two or three dimensions. And another way that we can use this is as a pre-processing step, okay? So if I'm trying to run a machine learning algorithm, I'm worried about overfitting. So I can run this as a pre-processing step to pull my data down into a lower dimension. So the way that that's going to work is I'm gonna estimate my sample mean vector and covariance matrix using only the training data. Okay, I'm not gonna use the test data for this. So I'm gonna get sample mean vector using the training data and sample covariance matrix, again, using the training data only. Okay, so once I've completed this, I have my estimates and I can form uh, my PCA transform. The first step is I compute the eigen decomposition. So I find um, V and lambda. All right, and I only keep the first k uh, eigenvectors. And then I'm gonna center and project both the training and test data down to k dimensions. So I'm gonna have the reduced training data 
which I get by subtracting the mean, which I calculated from the training data and projecting by VK, again from the training data, I do the same to the test data and I remind myself that this mean vector and projection matrix V came only from the training data. And finally, I use the reduced training data along with the original training labels, right? So the labels haven't changed. They weren't really involved. Only the features changed. I use these to train an algorithm in this reduced dimension, like a classifier. And then I'm going to test it using the reduced data set, right? So the way to think about this is if I had an image living in some 800,000 dimensional space, maybe I could have used PCA to pull it down to 1,000 dimensions. Then I could train my data, my uh, machine learning algorithms in 1,000 dimensions and test them in 1,000 dimensions. And the transformation from 800,000 down to 1,000, I would have learned only using the training data. And it's just a bit of linear algebra.